Nah, nah. nah. oh, oke, okay. oke. Okay. Let's denote the reaction should be like this. Okay. Substrate S plus capital E enzyme is equals to SE. Okay, of course. Then SE will be equal to the enzyme plus the products. The product is, of course, the substrate. This one, this reaction. Enzyme plus the substrate is equals to the close and open parenthesis ES is equals to E plus P. Now, take note to the product P, denoted as P. Now, take note the capital E. In this reaction, hypothetically, okay, the amount of E, which is an enzyme, did not change, did not alter, okay, did not use up, or did not consume. So meaning to say, this is also one requirement of an enzyme. So this will speed up the rate of the reaction, catalyze the rate of the reaction, and requires a low activation energy to proceed the chemical reaction, but it will never use up in the chemical reaction, meaning it doesn't consume towards the chemical reaction. It's still the same catalyst or enzymes, okay? Because of this reaction, it shows, right? So that is also your uh, one of your identification. Because sometimes also an examination like that, okay? Uh, uh, what is one of the characteristic or behaviors of an enzyme? A. Oh. It will change in the, in the rate of the chemical reaction, okay? So it will not change because it will never consume. So sometimes a question to be like that, A, B, C, D, like that. Sometimes also having so many choices that are having correct. For example, it requires oh, A, it will never consume in throughout the chemical reaction process, okay? But it will never use up. B, it requires a low activation energy to proceed the chemical reaction, like that. Okay, C, it needs a substrate to proceed, to catalyze the chemical reaction. D, all of the above. Something like, your answer will be all of the above, because these are all the characteristics of an enzyme. Okay? So that will be like that in the most of the recent board examination. Okay? multiple choices and then sometimes you have to solve problems but no need to show the solution okay like that this is the enzyme and substrate okay now since our example is amylase so s is the amyl oh no e is the amylase enzyme kasi siya okay oh my gosh okay ang substrate is the starch. By the way, class, you need to know also how to identify which are the, the substrate, the enzyme, and the... so that you can easily understand also. Okay? And the products. And the products will be the simple sugars or the P. Okay? Simple sugars or the glucose itself, specifically. Okay. Oh my gosh, no? It will take a longer time really to explain in detail fashion. Okay? Something like that. This one. Right? Amylase is our enzyme. Our substrate will be the starch. And our products will be the simple sugars or monosugars or specifically the glucose. Okay. Or we could try this to have, for example, another example of an enzyme is socrase. Okay, socrase. What's that? The identification is ASE in enzyme, huh? so socrase. Because that is for socrose. Socrose will be our substrate. The sugar we have, the white sugar we have in our table. Okay, that is socrose. Okay? And then, 
it catalyzes the reaction into a product of glucose and fructose. Okay. Glucose and fructose. Okay. The glucose and fructose here are the denoted as P. Our enzyme is the sucrase. Our substrate is really the sucrose, which is carbon 12, H22, O11. And this glucose and fructose still simple sugars. Okay? It, it, it differs only with their orientation of the reaction. If we draw, okay, their chemical orientation, you know, structures. But the same formula, carbon 6, H12, O6. Glucose and fructose is just the same. Okay? So, meaning to say, sucrose is a disaccharide because glucose is a monosaccharide plus monosaccharide fructose also or simple sugars. Okay? Meaning to say, a disaccharide is a double sugar. Okay? Or the a polysaccharides. Two or more monosaccharides. Or two or more monomers of saccharides. So, the term is monomers. And the term for polysaccharides is the polymer. Okay, we have need to understand also the terms in organic chemistry. Okay, something like that. So this is gonna be like this, ha? Huh? So crazy. Okay. Now, let's go to the two types of enzyme. The two types of enzyme, we have the active enzyme. That is basically the protein-based enzyme. As I mentioned a while ago. Okay, protein-based catalyst and the inactive enzyme okay inactive enzyme is the apo enzyme so meaning to say guys this inactive enzyme the substrate and the enzyme will never clip together so how can we do that even though we have to lower the activation energy okay even if uh, we need other properties in order for them to proceed the reaction especially the concentration the temperature like that okay the rate of the reaction okay so and the ph okay like this by the way guys uh, we need to understand first i forgot to discuss okay the behavior and the activities of enzymes uh will be affected or by this four factors the temperature, okay, the concentration, okay, the inhibitors and the activators, okay, like that, and the pH, okay, pH, concentration, temperature, and the inhibitors, okay, this will aid and promote the activities of an enzyme, and these are all the factors that could affect the behavior of this enzyme. Without these factors, our enzyme will be abnormal, okay? So they cannot act uh, properly. So it cannot produce a healthy substances that made us healthy, of course, okay? So we need to have these factors in a, you know, an adequate level, okay? Something like that. And the pH for this, uh, most of the enzymes usually range from six to eight. Meaning to say acidic, right? Six because the pH below 14 is acidic, right? Something like that, as far as I could remember. Oh my gosh, help me, I could not remember anywhere. Okay, one to six is acidic, right? And uh, eight to 14 is basic, okay? And the seven is a pH neutral for those substances. All substances have the pH, meaning to see the determination of the acidity and basicity of a substance. This matters the most because how they react with other substances. Okay? That's why we need to determine how basic, how acid the substance is. In order also we can proceed for the right chemical reaction for that particular chemical reactions inside our body. Right? pH is very important. For example, uh, the lemon juice. The lemon juice have a very low pH, which is 2.2. Okay? If it has a very low pH acidic in that environment, so if the virus will come to, the, to your respiratory system for the very first time, so it will be catch by the, okay, phagocytes. 
okay, white blood cells, and then it will be killed by the lymphocytes, something like that, okay? Okay, the lymphocytes will trap this virus and the phagocytes will eat, will kill and destroy this virus, okay? Because of a high acidity of the lemon. That is if the virus will occur there for the very, very first time, okay, in your respiratory system, okay? Because it has an acidic environment. So, like that. So, the pH is very, very important also. Okay? Like that. So, that's one of the factors that could affect the rate of the reaction of this uh, enzyme's activities. Okay? Very clear already, right? So, for example, if there is a question like this, what are the factors that could affect the activities of an enzyme? Uh, enumerate uh, like this even though there are no choices you can still answer okay concentration temperature inhibitors like that okay so you have to take note for that okay and the ph for lang na siya. the same as solubility right factors that affecting the solubility we have the nature of solute the nature of solvent okay the concentration something like that and the catalyst Okay, four, right? As far as I could remember, I'm correct. So that is the factors affecting the solubility of a solution or the concentration of a solution, something like that. The same here, factors that could affect the activity of an enzyme, okay? It's, it's just gonna be like that, okay? The same also as the stress for the leach atelier's principle. The stresses are, it could either be the temperature, the concentration, and the pressure okay sometimes the questions will be mixed up also and sometimes you'll be confused that's why we need the basic foundations of chemistry to understand it very well okay like that okay so that is for the enzymes okay like that okay going back to the active enzyme so Sir Zotero, if we speak about active enzyme there's already a protein okay in active enzyme without protein so that is called an apple enzyme now what what is the requirement in order to become active again or to become an active enzyme okay charot. the requirement will be it needs a cofactor or a coenzyme to really catalyze the reaction what are those cofactors the cofactors are either inorganic okay ions or inorganic metal ions that could either be zinc positive 2, calcium positive 2, sodium ion positive 1, something like that. Inorganic metal ions that are our cofactors. And our coenzymes could either be an ions or a vitamins. Okay? See? The vitamins also can, can be acting as a coenzyme. Okay? And the ions. Okay? Something. Ions. I-O-N-S. Again, review, ions are positively and negatively charged particles, okay? Or charged particles. It can never be called an ion if it is not a charged particle, okay? A neutron is an, not an ion. Why? Because it has a neutral charge. That's why it's called a neutron. Remember that one. It has no charge, okay? But an electron has a charge of negative one. So that is negatively charged particle. So that is already an ion. Okay? So if there is a negatively charged particle, which is an electron, and a positively charged particle, which is a proton, that is a, an ion, I-O-N. And it will undergo the process of ionization. Okay? Like that. So, so that we can really understand. Okay. Now... Okay, that's the requirement, huh? For the factors that could change or that could uh, have the behavior of these enzymes. Okay, like that. Okay, now, we draw here. Again, too much drawing. Oh my gosh. Lagi, too much drawing, good siya. Okay. Ganon talaga siya. Wow. Okay, so we have active enzyme. Let's have the acronym capital A and capital E to make it uh, identifiable or distinguishable. 
<laughs> Ganun ba yun? I distinguishable. Okay, my gosh. Where's my pencil pen? Oh my gosh, time check is brought to you by Powered Alaska. Nice, 6.3, come on. Every time I discussed, okay. Oh my gosh! Wait for a while. My goodness! Oh, ganon. Okay. Oh, ganon pala siya. Wagi pa siya. Chara! Okay. Active. Oh, dinisyo mo agi. Sorry, guys. Active, oh, di siya mo agi. Active, di siya mo agi. Oh, active, oh, mo agi siya. Okay? Active enzyme. Okay. Active enzyme. Okay. Which is with protein because we mean of protein. Protein based talaga siya. Okay, protein plus inactive enzyme. Ganon. Okay. Wait for a while, ha. Inactive enzyme. I have to use the, you know, the inactive enzyme or apo enzyme so pala but the question will go like this blank is an inactive enzyme so you will answer automatically apo enzyme even though there are no choices in the examination right so it needs a cofactor So that it will become an active enzyme already. Okay? So, when this becomes an active enzyme, this enzyme plus the cofactor is called now a holoenzyme. Charot. Grabe! Oh, ito na! Guys! Active enzyme, specifically the protein, plus an active enzyme, which is the apple enzyme, okay, needs a cofactor in order that to become an active enzyme. Now, the product will be the cofactor plus the active enzyme, and this is now called as, the combination of the two is now called the holo enzyme. Okay, so uh, this is in the point, in this point, that the reaction has been catalyzed, okay, for in the product. Okay? It's very clear. Okay? That's gonna be like this. Okay. Now, I forgot to tell you guys that uh, when this uh, enzyme discovered... Charot, may talaga. Yes, we need to know the history also. Okay. Talking about the history. So, as I mentioned a while ago, that not all enzyme ends in ASE. That is the protein-based catalyst or enzymes, right? There are also that is RNA-based catalytic uh, substances with uh, ribozymes. So, meaning to say, ribo sugars are responsible there because this is ribozyme. So ribose, okay? Meaning ribose, five carbon atoms in the pentose family of the aldose sugars, okay? In studying the carbohydrates, okay? Actually, the sugars are under studying the macromolecule called carbohydrates, really. Okay? Like that. Okay? So, going back. Okay? Okay. Macromolecules. Okay. 
Now we need to discuss this one. Enzymes. So before, in 1853, this enzyme is known really as catalyst, only catalyst, okay? Catalyst, okay. And it become an enzyme, okay, name, and in 1878, Okay. Okay. By Mr. Welly, no he, like this, Mr. Welly. He's the one who discovered and called this as a enzyme already in 1878. Okay. It took how many years? 25 years under the series of studies of biochemistry that the catalyst name has been changed to enzyme, right? So from 1853 to 1878 by Mr. Wellinoe, -E, something like that. Okay, in 1853, this is catalyst discovered by Berzelius. Okay. Maybe we don't know, it will come out to the examination also. Blanc, this is a catalyst first discovered by Mr. Blanc. A, blah, 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 B, blah, blah, blah. Just like the penicillin, right? Penicillin is discovered by Blanc. Okay, your answer will be Alexander Fleming. It's just like that kind of question in science. Okay, we cannot deny that. There's a lot of questions also sometimes like that in the science examination. Okay. Okay, so Berzelius is the one who discovered first the catalyst. Okay, in 1878, it was known as an enzyme by P. Okay. And then, the first catalyst or enzyme discovered is the urease Charot, okay? meaning the substrate is really urea okay like this urease from the word urine right and it was isolated and crystallized first okay under the experiment and discovery of James Summer Charot in 1929, Charlotte, James Summer. Uh, 1929, ha? So 1929 from 1978, how many years? Subtract that one. You're good in mathematics? 1978 to 1929, subtract that one. Okay. Oh my gosh. It took... Wait. 1929, 1878, okay, 1, 8, mm, 11. It took 31 years to first discover the first enzyme called as urease. It was isolated and crystallized by the experimentation conducted by Mr. James Summer in 1929. Okay, these are the history why enzymes appear. Okay, nowadays. There's an history behind for that. Okay, that's very clear. Now we go to the illustration. Okay, to, to the factors, something like that. You should remember, guys, that it's always like a curve every time. Okay? for the rate of reaction versus the temperature, rate reaction versus the, you know, the concentration, the pH, sorry, and the rate of reaction versus the concentration. Okay? Like that. I'll show you. Because we cannot have a value unless we do the experimentation here. Because just like in mathematics, we have the graph of paper, and we need to plot that one, the first value of the temperature, and the rate of the reaction value and then if we connect that dots it will become a core and we have no more time like that and it's not also practical to do that inside my room there's no you know laboratory experiment here okay so let's just assume it's gonna be like that the illustration okay okay let's just automatic to understand in that way okay and the rate of reaction should be in uh, per second, right? Because rate of reaction have time at the denominator. 
okay, could be moles per second, right? Because moles are concentration, like this, moles per second, okay? Rate of reaction, it's gonna be like that. There's a lot of unit for that, okay? Actually, wait, tagal, eh? Okay, ito na. This is the rate of reaction. Oh my gosh, no. This is RA. Graph like this in the y-axis. Graph in the x-axis. The x-axis will be the temperature. Okay. Like this. The rate of the reaction of the enzyme is in the y-axis. Okay, and the temperature is in the x-axis. If we try to put this plot one by one, assuming that we have our experiments, okay, the graph will be a linear pointing upwards, something like that. Like this, okay? So this is the relationship between the rate of the reaction and the temperature. So, like that. So meaning to say, as the temperature rises, and then the rate of reaction is also rises, right? Can you interpret this one also? Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, because we don't have values, okay, to connect the dots in this illustration of this graph, okay? It's gonna be like the relationship goes like that, right? Okay. And then our rate of reaction, we're referring to enzyme, huh? R A of course. That's our topic. Okay, like this. And the pH. Okay. And then rate of reaction versus the concentration. Like that. Of the substrate. Like this. It's gonna be a curve like this. A curve like this, something like this, huh? Okay. The rate of reaction versus the concentration graph, the rate of the reaction versus the pH graph, and the rate of reaction versus the temperature graph. The one I discussed to you, the factors that affects the behavior or the activities of an enzyme. Okay? Now, we, we need to show to you the reaction or the rate of the reaction of the, for example, if we take a reaction of A plus B, okay. In our basic knowledge in chemistry, guys, we have five types of chemical reaction. The chemical reactions will not proceed, okay, if there is no sufficient energy, okay, to make our reaction successful. So, meaning to say, there must have an activation energy, okay, like that to proceed that as a, a successful reaction. A plus B is equals to AB, no, like that, like this, okay. So, it requires sufficient energy to produce A and B or else it will never be combined in a combination reaction. Combination reaction or? Synthesis reaction, right? Like that. Okay? So the same as having the activation energy. Now, if having an activation energy, it will just proceed to a product. From your reactants, it goes to the product. Now, it doesn't require any more a catalyst because the activation energy is already adequate and the purpose and one requirement of enzyme to behave is to lower the activation energy meaning to say the enzyme only will act if there is a lower in activation energy that's why it's purpose behind okay so if the activation energy of there is a sufficient energy why we should need a catalyst or enzyme by itself it will produce completely and successfully the products Okay, that's the, you know, the, the logic behind, okay, for the enzyme. But, unfortunately, most of the chemical reactions inside our body will really involve and need enzymes. There's no such uh, complete reversible reactions inside our body. It's always a reversible reaction, 
Okay? Meaning, a product will produce another product, and a, a product will produce a byproduct like that. It's rare and seldom to go back to its original reactance. So if it go back to the original reactant, that is a reversible reaction. But it, na it never holds true all the time. Okay, that's why so many irreversible reactions, especially the macromolecules, especially if we involve this uh, enzymes, the protein-based catalyst. Okay, like that. Now, I illustrate that one here. Of course, we'll consider the without activation energy and the with activation energy. So meaning to say, in a first situation that the reaction doesn't require an activation energy, which is a zero, because it has already a sufficient energy, okay? And then, by having the activation energy, or by introducing an enzyme, so it's for example, A and B again, okay? Like this, okay. And now we have to graph. Do you remember the graph in algebra? Okay, algebra. We have the left negative x-axis. Really? Yup. Okay, right positive x-axis. Okay, and then up positive y-axis and down negative y-axis. So let's put that way negative y in the upper portion. Okay, negative y and something like, no, positive y, sorry. Okay, and the negative y downside. Okay, and positive uh, in the left is negative x and positive x in the right. So this is where the quadrant principle in algebra. Okay, the quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4, where it belongs. If you remember that one, right? In our algebra, something like this. Okay, now we put that here in the enzymology study. Okay, now we have here, of course, the arrow pointing upward if it's a positive y-axis and the arrow pointing downward if it is a negative y-axis. Now, here will be the so we now try to consider the release and the supply. Okay, again, we should remember the endothermic and exothermic reaction because it's related to energy release and energy supply. Now, endothermic reaction, what do you mean by that? If there is an endothermic reaction, okay, the heat is being consumed and the heat is being absorbed so the environment is very cold or cold environment in exothermic reaction the heat is being released so the environment is very hot and there's a high temperature now we try to apply that here in the energy supply and energy released where is the positive the energy released or the energy supplied okay so, the positive will be the energy supplied, okay, at the top, positive y axis. Okay, supplied, right? You supply, meaning positive, by common sense, okay? If I, I supply you with money, that's positive money coming from you. 